Okay, brothers and sisters, today I want to speak about um, this one question in um, <laughs> in First uh, Thessalonians chapter four, verse eleven, which uh, where Paul tells people to mind their own business. <laughs> Have you ever asked yourself this question? Why was Paul telling people to mind their own business and work with their hands? What what was the thing behind this? Okay, now. Um, we have to understand that Paul encourages believers to make it our own ambition to lead a quiet life. Okay? He tells us in 1 Thessalonians, make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business and to work with your hands. Okay, this is a message to the believers. Okay? Now, we have to understand that earlier in the letter, Paul co uh, commends the Thessalonians for their faith, hope, and love. Okay, let me just show you this. Uh, in First Thessalonians chapter one verse three, Paul commends them. He tells them, "Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father." All right. So those are three identifiable characteristics of maturity. So it was quite a compliment that Paul would say that the Thessalonians were demonstrating faith, hope, and love. Okay? Faith, hope, and love. Let's see also verse 8 here. Uh, For from you sounded out of the world of the Lord, not in only Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place of your faith to God, word is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. Are you seeing this one? Paul observes that the Thessalonians' faith was so strong that he did not need to instruct them about faith anymore. But, uh, however, he sent Timothy, um, he did send Timothy to them in order to encourage them in their faith time and time again. And that's why we see this one in First Thessalonians, uh, First Thessalonians three two. Okay, let me just open this. Uh, First Thessalonians three verse two. We see Paul sending Timothy to encourage them. He says, "And sent Timotheus, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith." Okay, so. With this picture, we see that Timothy uh, brought back good news about their faith and their love. Okay, like we can see also here in verse 6. But now when Timotheus came f uh, from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, and that you have good remembers, rem remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us as we also to see you. Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our afflictions and distress by your faith. You see, Paul is saying to this church that you guys are really a good team. You're a good team. I, I really enjoy uh, uh, just your presence and also uh, hearing about you because you really care about your brothers and sisters. You also care about us also. You, you're really a, a good lot. Okay? So, we, we see, in fact, that these people in the church of Thessalonica, they were so effective at loving one another that Paul says he doesn't need to write anything more. You see, th there are people who love so much until even you as a, as a, as a preacher or someone who is trying to preach, you, you don't even know what to say. You're just there and saying, brethren, I know you understand. I know you know the things, how they are like. I, I, I know. I understand you. You're just a, a very nice, good lot, okay? <laughs> Let me just show you this. 4, verse 9. It, it, Paul just says, I don't even know what else to tell you guys. You, you're, just, you're just good. But as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write to you. You see what Paul is saying? I don't even need to tell you about loving one another. You, you for sure love one another. For you yourselves are taught of God to love one another. You see, these are characters of a good church. A church which loves others, a church which is uh, uh, just uh, so devoted to doing the work of God, so devoted to uh, being there and doing what is right. But uh, <laughs> of course, 
It is very interesting that uh, while Timothy brought back the news of their faith and love, Paul did not mention their hope. You see, you can be so loving, you can uh, know so much, you can follow so many things, but sometimes we lack hope. Look at a time like this when uh, everybody is waiting for the rapture and we are so much confused and we are asking, what's going to happen? Sometimes we as Christians, we lack hope and we feel as if... Um, it's like Jesus is not coming and th things are going a bit far off. Like we are losing hope. Yes, we have the love, we have everything that we need, but sometimes we can lose hope. And this is what uh, the church of Thessalonica was losing. They were losing hope, but they had everything else in place. They were, they were really good guys. They they knew and they followed everything they were supposed to be, but, but they, were, they were lacking hope. Hope was a big deal for them. So we see the Thessalonians believers, they understood some important details of biblical prophecy. For example, um, if you check in uh, First Thessalonians, uh, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1, uh, you see, but of the times and the season, brethren, you have no need that I write to you. You see, they, they understood some important details of biblical prophecies. They understood a part of it but in first thessalonians chapter 4 and 5 paul is basically focusing his writing on encouraging them in their hope in their hope they needed to be encouraged in their hope because they were going through a difficulty time as well as a very trying time and paul wanted them to be able to be strong even in tough times there are times that God really just wants to encourage you and tell you, my friends, I'm still coming. You see, you are a friend of God. God is your friend and he will also send a people to speak to you and to encourage you at a time when you really feel down. Look at this. In 1 Thessalonians 4.13, he says, But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. You see, these people sometimes they they are feeling low, and at times they are feeling hopeless. They didn't really understand how is it going to be. I've lost a loved one, and and I'm crying, and I'm alone, and situations are really getting tough on me. They they want me to lose my job because I I cannot take take this mark that they're giving people. They're telling me that my my house will will, will you know I, I won't get. Uh, this and that, maybe I will lose my car, I will lose this and that because of the things and how the life is right now. And as Christians, we are losing hope at some point. We feel hopeless. We feel hopeless at some point. This one is, is common to many believers. Not that they don't know that they are saved, but you lose hope. And that's why Paul explains that he didn't want them to be uninformed about the future specifically what happens when a believer dies and what happens when Jesus returns. Paul didn't want them to grieve as those who have no hope. And Paul understood that in order to be strong in hard times, like when we loved, when our loved one dies, it is important to know and rely on God's promises. And uh, after commending the, Thessalon the, the, the church of Thessaloniki, uh, Thess Thessalonica, sorry, this, these believers, for their love, uh, like we saw in uh, 1 Corinthians 4, 9, Paul challenges them to show love even more. In the context of Paul, he, he provides three reasons that we should mind our own business. Let me show you this. In 1 Thessalonians uh, 4, 9, it says, okay, but it's touching brotherly love. You need not that I write unto you, for you yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Okay? So he commends their love. He commends their love. And Paul also challenges them to show love even more. In the context, Paul provides three reasons that we should mind our own business. And this was our main point of this video. In 1 Thessalonians 4.12, Paul says that you may walk honestly towards them that are without and that you may have lack of nothing. You see? So, when when you mind your own business, you will lack nothing. There, there are people who uh, uh, 
they they they, they don't want to work hard they don't want to do uh, things they just want to sit down and uh, maybe be a pest or a tick to some people and uh, they're saying oh I, I don't want to do this because I know I know I'm a man of God I'm, I'm a believer but you, you think that uh, you see it's all about testimony my friends because if we don't really work hard and mind our own business the world is going to laugh at us they're going to say these people they, they, they say they are Christians because they are given this and they are given that just look at sometimes when when you look at pastors I know pastors have to rely from the church but uh, you can serve and still do some few things on the side maybe you have a small shop which is helping you in one or another so that you can also be minding your own business and you don't really need to rely so much on people that people will think that oh this person wants me to get saved so that i can come to his church so that i can give him and he can build the houses and he can live a, a luxurious life you see paul is trying to tell uh, these people you have to work hard you have to try as much as you can so that you can have a testimony so that you can have a hope even in your life because sometimes when we just sit down and we have nothing to eat we have nothing to wear we have nothing to do we tend to feel that why is god not even coming because uh, you don't you 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 say to yourself i wish i was just in heaven and i was not here yes i know it's very good we all rather want to be in heaven but we have a commission right now to speak to people and to let them know about the good news of jesus christ and unless we are minding our business and trying as much as we can to also work on the side and do something so that we can generate something for ourselves so that even as we preach to people they won't see us as a burden think about paul paul himself he was a he was he was a tent maker and uh he worked hard he did some couple of things at least to f uh, fun for himself but nowadays most people don't really do that okay and when you look at uh, that verse very well it says that you may have lack of nothing so we as christians we should be lacking nothing because god said he will bless the work of our hands so while other people are working 100 percent even if you work a quarter percent god will always help you out because your intention is good remember the bible says that uh, they pray and they they don't receive what they they ask because their intentions are evil but if you are a, a believer and you're praying with your intention being good then you're going to receive my friends so it's good to mind our business and to try and uh, do as much as we can so that we can also be an example and uh, help others who also do not have because sometimes <laughs> oh, if, if you don't understand is sometimes when you have to pull people to christ there are others who will come to you because maybe they, are, they had a certain um a physical problem maybe someone did not have some food or something happened in one way or another and as you as you reach a hand of compassion to them you can also tell them the gospel but think about it if if you have nothing all the time so that's why paul was saying please let's try as much as we can to love one another to do what is right yes that is all okay but also love is not only by nothing it's love and also you show compassion even by material things remember the 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 the, the video i talked about yesterday although the audio was really bad of the good samaritan the good samaritan yes he, he had compassion he had compassion with the with that, that person who has been who had been beaten by the thieves on the roadside but of course he had to show some action it's not only just compassion he had to wipe the wounds he had to take him to a lodge and he had to pay some money and you see that's how we are called to be as christians we're not called just to sit down and say okay i love you brother but it's it's, it's just like that there's nothing else we have to show compassion also with material things and what we have okay so as a testimony of faithfulness it was evident and it would be good it was really good and it will be good even now for people to see the Thessalonians 
taking care of their own responsibilities and further earning the respect of those who are observing. You see, sometimes respect is earned. When they, sometimes they, they, the world usually uh, ignore Christians because we are seen as people who just want to maybe just borrow and borrow, give us this, give us this, but ourselves, are we really giving out? Are we doing it? Because people are observing. And Paul wanted them to be a good testimony. And secondly, minding your own business and working with your hands, you will provide for yourself and not be indebted to or reliant on someone else to do that work for you. By putting this exhortation in the context of being more loving, Paul is helping us to understand that our taking care of our own responsibility of our own responsibility is an expression of love towards others because we are not putting the burden of our welfare on somebody else okay we are taking our own responsibilities we can do it it's it's hard sometimes in this world but also let's take that responsibility and finally there's a third reason uh, why Paul tells the Thessalonians to mind their own business and work with their hands. Apparently, there were some who thought that maybe the day of the Lord had begun. That's probably another reason. And they had stopped meeting their responsibilities. Let me just show you this in uh, 2 Thessalonians. Uh, in 2 Thessalonians um, chapter 3 verse 7 we can read to 11 and I'll show you that there are people who had stopped working there are people who had stopped doing things because they thought maybe the day had come okay and then Paul is telling them for yourselves know how you ought to follow us for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you neither do we eat any man's bread for naught or for nothing, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that you might not be chargeable to any of you. You see what Paul is saying? Even himself, he was working so that he's not chargeable to anyone, and he can also show a testimony. Not because we have not power. You see, Paul, what he's saying? It's not because we're doing this because we don't have power to ask for that, because not because we don't have that uh, maybe churches and branches that we can tell them, give give us some money to do this and that but we want to be an example to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us for even when we are with you this we commanded you that if anyone would not work neither should he eat for we hear that there are some which are walk among you disorderly working not at all but are busy bodies are you seeing the people who are like this in our community, in our society? They are Christians, but they, they just want to be busy bodies. I'm rushing for this mission. I'm rushing for that mission. I want to do this. I'm, I'm running after this. I, you see, you're always having something that you, you're saying that you're doing. But uh, in some sense, you just want maybe to go to uh, a certain brother's house or a sister's house to, to maybe say you want to preach something. Just, just so that they can give you some offering of some way. And uh, as we continue doing this for, for money or for maybe so that people can also look upon our, our things and what we need, we, we start being hypocrites in some, po in some point. We, we may end up starting to preach something which talks more about the giving rather than the word of God because there's something that we need to achieve. So Paul was trying to counter that so that you can be able to understand is we, we also need to have a point whereby we also work. And he himself, Paul being a great apostle of God, and uh, with this great commission to the whole world to go and uh, preach to people this good news, the gospel of grace, which was not even uh, given to any other apostle, I'm sure Paul would have wanted to, like, uh, to be laid off all duties. But he was still a tent maker. He was still working. He was still doing things for himself. He was still... Uh, uh, he was still, uh, let, let me check this, what are you talking about? Minding his own business, yes. You see, he was still minding his own business, trying to do whatever he can so that he can be an example to others. Are you, are you seeing the point here? Okay. So, Paul, in Second Thessalonians 3, 7, he speaks again as those who had done all this. Okay, those who had thought that maybe the day is near and I don't need to do something and let, let me just sit down, let me just look up and wait, 
You see, as we look up, my friends, we also need to do something so that we are a testimony. And a part of Paul's prescription for this bad behavior was to uh, reiterate, okay, and further explain what he had told them in, in his first letter about the return of Jesus. That is about the rapture and the day of the Lord, okay? The day of the Lord is what follows after the rapture. So the Thessalonians could have had a strengthened hope by understanding what God was planning to do and that and that, that this one would help them okay this one would help them um it would help them to to strengthen their hope by understanding what God was wanting to do in their lives and also strengthening the hope of the other people okay they strengthen the hope of the other people strengthen uh, all those people because if you guys you don't stand up and show a testimony then uh, how are you going to convince the world how are you going to convince the world okay because we don't want just to be busy bodies and uh, the same thing is true is very true for many of us today who just want to sit down and do nothing and just say that uh, God is going to do something we're going to be fake like most of uh, if we, we keep on like this we're going to be like those prosperity churches where it's all about I receive Papa I receive Papa I'm sure you've seen them and uh, the, the, the prosperity churches are always saying hey God will give you a car this month yes I receive Papa God will build your house yes I receive Papa but you see there have to be some action even the Bible says faith without action is dead the only way we can know your faith in Christ was right is if you have some action. We, we can see that this person has changed. This person is doing now things differently. We can at least believe that this faith was really different. Even you yourself. It's not about people. It's about even you yourself. How will you know that you've changed? It's by the actions that are in your life. So you can't just say, I receive, but then you don't really do. You don't really work. I'm not saying that salvation is by work. No. Salvation is a free gift. You don't work for it. But you see, there has to be fruits. Even in your work, even as you say, I receive, oh God, thank you for this miracle that you're going to do to me. You have to do something. You have to work. You have to, you have to change your mentality and do something. Even Moses himself, when he was called by God, he was asked, what do you have? He said, I have a, I have a rod here. You have to have something. Okay, are you, are you getting the point? So, as I conclude, I'll tell you that by having a mature faith, love and hope, we can make wise decisions and take care of what God has given us so that we can take care of ourselves. We can mind our own business, focusing on what He has given us to do and not be knocked off balance when the times are difficult. Okay, don't be knocked off balance when, when sometimes things are really hard. Okay, I know the church of Thessalonica had everything. It had love, peace, unity, union, everything. But they lacked hope because probably sometimes we lack this hope because we, are, we, are, we already feel like we are the, at the verge of the rapture. Yes, I know we all feel that. I also feel that. But let us also not just be busy bodies. Let's wake up and mind our own business so that the world can learn from us. They can see us and they can understand for sure, these people, these people, they know what they're talking about. They have a God that they believe in. So, if you guys were there and uh, you've never heard about the gospel, please believe the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all about understanding how that Christ died for your sins, who was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. If you know this and you believe this, then all you need to do is confess to God what you believed. Confession is not a sinner's prayer. Sinner's prayer does not save. Sinner's prayer is whereby you are confessing what you don't know. But uh, when you understand, because the Bible tells us we, we understand, we believe from our hearts, we don't believe from our mind. So something which is in our hearts is something which you have understood. So you have to hear the gospel and understand how that Christ died for your sins. And once you understand, then you believe. Just tell Christ, Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins, you were buried and rose again, as is written in the scriptures. I believe you, and I put all my hope in you. And once you do that, my friends, you're saved, sealed, and sanctified unto the day of redemption. God bless you. I hope this has been a blessing to you. 
hope uh, if your busy body you've changed <laughs> and um i know i know sometimes right now people are waiting for the for the rapture is is really tough but uh let's look up let's look up and also let's not be busy bodies let's let's also work let's show some testimony okay let's mind our own business if you enjoyed this video please give it a like also you can subscribe and uh, share to your friends and check at the description below we have a couple of other channels which are just outside youtube please go and check and share to your friends let them hear the gospel let them understand because the time is at hand okay the time is at hand